Greetings and welcome to Faith Moments, a weekly podcast where we proclaim and ponder the Sunday Mass readings. We are entering Holy Week with Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is this beautiful liturgical entrance into the passion of the Christ, of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so today I want to open with a prayer, some prayers for those around the world. I'm going to close with a meditation. And today, because we are in year B for the Palm Sunday, we will be hearing the passion account from the Gospel of Mark. For Palm Sunday, we will hear different passion accounts depending on the year that we're in and the cycle of readings. However, we also hear a passion account on Good Friday. That Good Friday passion account is always from the Gospel of John. So as we begin today, let us call to mind those in most need and bring them up in our prayers. Let us pray. As Jesus enters victoriously into Jerusalem to do his Father's will, we turn to the Father, united with our crucified Savior. Let us pray that the suffering and death of Jesus Christ will strengthen the church in holiness and give her new growth. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are to be baptized and received into the church at Easter Vigil, that these final days of preparation will be a time of transforming grace. Lord, hear our prayer. That civil authorities will use their power to protect the poor, oppose injustice, preserve religious freedom, and promote lasting peace. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians everywhere will live this holy week with special reverence, self-giving, and devotion. Lord, hear our prayer, that God will shelter all persecuted Christians and make their witness effective for the redemption of all. Lord, hear our prayer, for the grace to offer our own sufferings in union with Christ, trusting that he will use them to sanctify us and others. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, by the holy cross of Christ, your Son has redeemed the world. Help us to take up his cross and to be united to Jesus in his passion with Mary, his mother, for Jesus is our Lord, now and forever. Amen. Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord, this year on Sunday, March 24th. As you come into the church, they'll probably have an opportunity for you to move outside of the church for the procession of the palms and the blessing of the palms as we enter into Palm Sunday. And there is a gospel reading that comes with that procession of the palms, which this year comes from the gospel of Mark. We're going to go right into the readings for this Palm Sunday and again, beautiful readings. We hear these same readings, the reading one, reading two, and the psalm. They're the same every cycle, but the gospel will change as we get to different A, B, and C cycles of our readings. For this Mass of Palm Sunday, you'll see the color red. Again, that passion red that we will have liturgically as the color as we enter into Holy Week. Our collect for today, for this Palm Sunday, is this. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, so and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading for Palm Sunday is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. 
Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The Word of the Lord. Our psalm is Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All you who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found, in, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, According to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table, in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has this been the... Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, 
when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the city and a man you and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him wherever he enters. Say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and they reclined at table and were eating. Jesus said, Amen. I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one by one, surely it is not I. He said to them, one of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the son of man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one, arrest him, and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. and. 
At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to him in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple area. Yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, you say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, 
then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, crucify him. Pilate said to them, why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one to the left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, he saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabatati, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see if Elijah comes down to take comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. 
Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Each of the different synoptic gospels has a little bit different interpretation or maybe just different viewpoints of this passion account. And it's a beautiful time during this Holy Week. We get the account from Mark. You can go back during Holy Week and have Matthew and John, Matthew and Luke, that is, get those accounts of the Passion. And then on Good Friday, as I mentioned, we'll have the account from St. John. We'll also hear a bit of the washing of the feet and that time of the institution of the Holy Eucharist and Holy Thursday's account from the Gospel of John as we enter the Triduum. Just a couple of things I want to point out. Again, we hear these readings every year from the prophet Isaiah chapter 50. These are verses four through seven. The last line is this, the Lord is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have sent, I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The Lord God is is my help. I think about all of the time in history where there's been persecution in the church of the innocent, poverty, war, violence, the greatest atrocities against humankind, humans against humans in so many different horrible ways. And yet for the one who loves Christ, in their heart they cry out, the Lord is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint. It's going to be bruised again, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. Maybe these can be words of encouragement for us to endure, to endure to the next step. So many times in our lives, really, we only see a little bit. The Lord is my light. The Lord is the light that that shines to, to my next step in life, my vocation, the work that I'm doing in this disease, in this whatever it is that you're going through. The Lord shows you just enough to get you to the next step, knowing that I will not be put to shame. Keep those words close to you in those times of distress. I love in the gospel, according to Mark of the Passion account, very early on we hear that Jesus goes to Bethany to the table of Simon the leper. Again, he goes into, this is at the end, uh, this is like right in the entrance into the passion. And there, here he is yet in another a sinner's house. And here is the woman with the alabaster jar of perfumed oil. And she anoints Jesus. She anoints his head with this beautiful, costly oil to the chagrin of almost all probably around her. But then Jesus says this beautiful thing. He says, amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed, we're proclaiming the gospel right now. You're going to hear it on Palm Sunday. 2,024 years later, the gospel is being proclaimed. And Jesus says, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, that's happening right now. What she has done will be told in memory of her. You know, we're remembering that generosity. We're remembering that selflessness love, you know, that absolute love. She was ridiculed for her actions, but she saw the master. She saw the master and she did what was right at that moment to care for the one whom she loved. 
regardless of what the other people said, regardless of, of whatever else was going on, she focused her attention, her generosity. She gave all that she could to Jesus, to Jesus. She found Jesus in the, in the home of a leper at the entry of his passion. And she brought him comfort. She brought him tenderness. She brought him loyalty. She brought him uh, a passion of a true love. Would that we could offer such a gift to Jesus. I invite you as I invite myself during this Holy Week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Spy Wednesday, read the scriptures and find out why Spy Wednesday is called that. And then we have Holy Thursday. An invitation for you, which I'm going to be doing, is many of our churches will be open a little bit later after the Holy Thursday service for a time of quiet wherever the uh, the sacrament the blessed sacrament is in repose i would encourage you to take that time take that time as a family even if your children have to sleep on your lap to be in the presence of the lord as he enters into good friday we then have the good friday many places will continue obviously the stations of the cross and then coming together for the good friday service and then the easter vigil i say this every year and maybe we get a couple extra people in the church the most beautiful liturgy that we can celebrate in my opinion in the whole liturgical year for the church is easter vigil I would love that we would have all seven readings. Uh, typically, you'll hear about four readings, baptisms, confirmations, first Holy Eucharist, Paschal fire, from, from the very moment you gather together in the fire to the very close of Easter vigil is amazing. I would encourage you to get, if you don't already have a missal, whether it's the Magnificat, the word among us, you will have all the readings for Easter vigil, even if they don't read all of them during the particular liturgy you're at, you have access to those readings. You have access to those Psalms and those prayers and make that your Holy Week prayer. Even one of those readings per day to break that up is so amazing. And it, it, it's all right here. I love this Magnificat because it's a Holy Week issue. So it just has from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, and you have all of these beautiful prayers at your fingertips. It it's it's a gift. Uh, if there's somebody in your home that can't get out, or a homebound person, bring this Magnificat, and you can read to them what's happening during this of most holy season of the year. I want to close with this um, this little meditation that was put in the Magnificat from Servant of God, Chiara Lubitsch. She was the founder and president of the Folklore Movement. And she says this, Sometimes we stop at the crosses that day by day you and I have in store for us. We moan and squirm like a goat caught in a bramble bush. We blame this or that, dream up a thousand reasons, and invent anything possible to free ourselves from the bare and harsh beams of the cross. But then there appears on the horizon a new and radiant dawn, and we gather the fragrant fruits you have brought to maturity in spite of our imperfect behavior. In the face of such miracles of your divine love, we understand the deepest meaning of suffering. It is the price that we had to pay. Lord, I thank you for the existence of suffering. Had you not permitted it, we could not have followed you, nor would we know the deep joy of personal union with you. If I close myself up in sorrow, I end up contemplating my own misery. But when I remember that on that night, you too were overcome by fear. And when I pour my own drop of sorrow into your heart, 
then I realize that all this serves to open wide my heart to all humanity and to shower the world with your graces. Again, servant of God, Chiara Lubick. Let us close with this prayer. May the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, Jesus our Lord, furnish us with all that is good, that we may do his will. Amen. <laughs>